Welcome, friends. Today, we are doing another first impressions video. Great. So, as you can tell by the title, which I haven't written yet, today I am doing first impressions on the house of Ducita Paris. I bought their Discovery set before Christmas. It is now the Ides of March. And it's, it's, it's been coming. I just thought I would lay off the first impressions for a while. I did a lot of them for a while there. So I thought I would mix it up a little bit. Um, so here we are. This is the sample set that has been crying out. Was, I do have some other ones from a couple of different houses. Left, I've got 80s de Venustis, and I've got about 15 or 20 of their fragrances. I can't remember, it's quite a few. And then I've got a couple of other sample sets as well, which I can't remember off the top of my head. I think there's some by a, by a brand called Angelos Creations that uh, somebody was very intent on me buying. I've also got um, Le Breton as well. But I wanted to get on to Ducita first because it's a big black box and it's been calling me name. Um, so here we are. I also got these, the collection signature. What? Is that not the signature collection? No, it's the collection signature. Yeah. So in here we have three fragrances, Montre, Oud Infini and Cavatina. Now I'm not sure that these aren't in the sample set. I'm just going to have a quick look actually. So there we have Oud Infini, which has been discontinued, but we'll do a first impressions anyway. Uh, Montre, which is a new one, I think, and Cavatina, which is a song. Anyway. Okay, you said that as a ghost. So in here we have Melody de l'Amour, Isara, La Douceur de Siam, Fleur de Lolita, Erewhon, Splendoris, Le Pavilion de O, Le Pavilion de O, de o Moonlight in Chiang Mai, and Anankara. So, no, the other three are a bonus. So that's 12 altogether. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Three in there. That's 12. Right, we'll do four in each video. Okay. Um, I'm going to start with these. We'll save these for last because they've come in their own little box. Um, so Ducita has been around for a while. It is a... It is a niche house, and it is made by, I do believe, a lady from Thailand called Presana. I'll... Oh, fucking... There we are, that's better. Ooh, there's a box inside the box. I'm a fan of a box. Look, there we are, okay. And then, inside this box, there's another box. Oh my word, what a nice little presentation we have. There's a little tag on that box. Um, there we are. Whoops. And there are the nine. We'll take the top four first, shall we? There's a bootlet here. Um, welcome to our universe, the collection. In search of excellence, Ducita, a paradise of happiness, fragrances, and excellence. Our perfume collection. Right. Screw it. We'll pick the top. We'll pick the top four. And then we'll pick the next four, and then we'll go through the rest. You know what I'm doing. Okay, so today we are going to be sampling. Out you come. What are you? Melody de l'Amour. Isara. La Douceur de Siam. Ah. Uh, and the last one today is Fleur de la Lita. Nice. Okay then. So I shall put all of this. This is a lot of boxery going on here. Down there you go. Oof. So. I've heard of the brand, but I haven't really heard of any apart from Oud Infini and Splendoris. Um. Don't know what I'm about to smell. I do have the bootlet on hand though, which is handy. So we will start at the beginning, which was Melody de l'Amour. Where 
Oh, extra de parfum, a spectacular white floral bouquet that altogether exudes romanticism, sensuousness, and serenity. Notes, white flowers, peach, and cedar. Okay, then. Not a big fan of the old white flowers, but there we are. So, let's have a look. Good size samples. Two and a half mil. I always feel like two mil is not enough, but then like five mil is too much, so... Anything in between isn't bad. Oof. That is white floral. It is peachy. It's got something like, it's got something of Mitsuko about it. Dank leaves. It's got a dankness to it. I don't know if that's me just associating it with... I don't know if that's me associating it with Mitsuko because I think that's got quite a... Quite an earthy vibe to it as well, you know? It's white floor. It's very pleasant, I'll tell you that right now. And not in a bad way. Because sometimes I say something's pleasant and I mean it in a bad way. <laughs> yes, it's pleasant. It's ordinary. It's boring. This isn't This isn't any of those things. This is a white floral I, I wouldn't mind smelling. Somewhere else, not on me. It's very grown up, but youthful at the same time, you know? Like someone in their 20s who isn't like a child. <clears throat> Melody de l'amour. Tuberose, gardenia and honey, Indian jasmine, broom, lily of the valley, peach, musk and cedar, according to Frey Granica. It's very strong. Very potent. There's a big white floral sort of thing, but there's like this little bit of sweetness too, and a cleanness. The peach is gone. It's, there's a greenness, like a salty greenness. I get that from tuberose, you know. Very floral. It's nice. It's good. It's good quality. It's not like a it's not like an average white floral fragrance, you know. It's not trying to remind you of something else. Does that make sense? Um because a lot of brands, a lot of brands will trade on that. It smells a bit like, um, it smells a bit like this fragrance or that fragrance. At the beginning, I got, my closest reference point was Mitsuko, but it soon leaves that behind. That's quite nice, actually. I'm pleasantly surprised. It's very well made. Absolutely. I don't know if, um... I don't know if the perfume is classically trained. Excuse me whilst I hydrate. I told you it was salty. Next. Next we have Isara. Isara Extra de Parfum, a refreshingly novel take on a fougere genre that feels like a walk into the ideal forest. Aromatic fougere, clary sage, pine and tonka. Ooh. This smells, well, smells, seems like it's going to be right up my street. I'm a fan. I'm a fan of that kind of thing, as you well know. This too was released in 2016. Sage and pine needle at the top, tobacco, kumaran and bourbon vetiver in the mid, 
The base is oak moss, woody notes, amber and musk. That is, I don't like it when they do that. Woody notes, exotic woods. That's another belter that they come out with sometimes. Exotic woods. Fucking, where are you getting these woods from? And what have they been up to? To consider themselves exotic. That's nice. Getting a big Tonka Kumaran sweet warm thing going on. Shaving foam. Tobacco. Smells like a like a like a like a middle-aged man. Lovely. That's really nice. This is like a really, I don't want to say posh, but like upper class version of um, YSL Pour Homme. Reeve Gauche, beg your pardon. Reeve Gauche Pour Homme. Beautiful. Sorry, I just had to pop out there for a minute. Um, this is very traditional. Um, it's very Tonka heavy, got that shaven foam type of thing going on. Tobacco, yes. This does smell more familiar. Um, I feel like I've smelled this before. It's good quality, absolutely. It's very well made. Um, it's round, it's warm, it's fresh. There's not much of a twist though. You know, a lot of houses, what they'll do is they'll make a fragrance like that and they'll give it a twist. Um, excuse me whilst I hydrate. That doesn't feel like it's got a, doesn't feel like it's got much of a twist going on. Um, but we'll move on. We'll move on to the next one, we'll come back to it. So, I'll just get two sticks out. I need to buy some more of these actually. So, next one is called La Douceur de Siam, or Siam. This is floral, rosy. Eau de Parfum, an exotic, beautitious bouquet in which Siamese elegance seamlessly blends with French perfumery tradition. Tropical flory, floral, champaka, rose de mai, and Thai woods. Fucking Thai woods. Launched in 2017. Champaka, frangipani, ylang ylang. Violet leaf, sandalwood, clove, vanilla, rose, and amber. I imagine this one's going to be quite pretty. Yes, it's a fruity floral. The fruit's more coming from the rose though, so it's like, it's much more floral, but you can see it's like jammy. It's got that sweet kind of conserve thing going on. Fresh. I 
think the clove and the violet leaf especially are giving it this kind of freshness. This it doesn't give in to like the 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 floral aspect as much as you would think. I'm getting samsara from this. It could be the alang and the sandalwood. <laughs> the rose is very prominent at the very top, but it settles right back down and the yellow florals come out much more after like the first minute. And I know this is just on paper, but... Um, Again, I'm getting a kind of salty vibe from it. Fresh floral, a mix of florals. Very pretty, elegant. Like all the things that they're saying in the description it is, it's well made as well. The rose is the rose is lovely. Um, like princess kind of thing. Do you know what I mean? It's nice, it's pretty. I would like to smell it on a woman. I don't know that, I, well, I, I know actually, I say I don't know, I do know, I wouldn't wear that myself, I wouldn't buy that. Um, although it is very nice. Okay. So we will move on to the last for today. And the last for today is Fleur de la Lita. Now, Fleur de la Lita is an eau de parfum, an exuberant floral fragrance of vividly green nuances that is at once youthful, flirtatious, and invigorating. It is a green floral. Magnolia, galbanum, and sandalwood. Hmm, galbanum and sandalwood, you say? That sounds quite nice. Let's see what the Fragrantica has to say. It came out in 2018. Top notes are white lily, jasmine, galbanum, magnolia, ylang ylang, and may rose. Mid notes are exotic floral notes. Not great, that, not great. And ambrette, which is musk mallow. Base notes are ambergris, sandalwood, Madagascan vanilla, and tonka bean. Where have you tonka bean all my life? Let's have a whiff, friends. I think I'm not gonna let these ones, um, I don't wanna say taint my view of the brand, but like affect me view of the brand because I think these are all like the floral ones. Um, certainly feels that way. That's nice. Very galbanum. Strong green galbanum, musty, musky kind of thing going on there. That's a really nice galbanum note. Um, I'm getting quite a lot of um, like, what would I call that? It's a bit like French lover. I don't know whether I'm associating it with French Lover because of the galbanum and then I'm taking it from there and extrapolating what's in French Lover and applying it to this. I 
I'm starting to get the white florals now. Galbanum's starting to settle down. Certainly get a massive blast of Galbanum off the top. Huge. Huge. Ambergris kind of thing. Like an Ambroxan Ambergris type of thing going on there as well. Like you can feel they're all like, they've all got like a thread that joins them all. That's what that material's supposed to do really. Fresh becoming much more floral now. Much less galbanum. The galbanum sinking back into what feels like a mid note. It's supposed to be a top note, but it feels like a mid note. How interesting. Like the, the, the galbanum is like corralling the white florals into something that isn't some like that isn't like particularly offensive to my nose. <sighs> hmm. How oh, interesting. Again, not something I would wear, not something I would buy. If you are into florals, you could do a lot worse than smell these. These are very fun. We'll go back through them and see what happens. So this is... Melody de l'amour. Something, I don't want to say sweaty, but something a little bit unwashed. There's something a little bit earthy, a little bit decay about that, you know? You no, know, leaves turn into mulch kind of thing. Soily, earthy. Next, we have Isara, which was the aromatic fougere. I'll try that on skin. I will definitely try that on skin. I like that. It's very good quality. It smells very well made. It smells very nice. Round, smooth, soft, fresh, warm. All those good things. What it does smell like is an aromatic fougere, and I have a lot of those. To get into the collection, that is the most crowded lane in my, in my collection. I don't want to mix me metaphors too much there, but like that is the perfume I've got most of. So it's going to have to be pretty exceptional. You know? But it smells very nice. I'll give it that. This is... La douceur de Siam, or Siam, I beg your pardon. This is really nice. This smells like a really, I'd really like to smell this on a woman. It's got this kind of mid-twenties to mid-thirties woman feel about it. I suppose it's a state of mind really, isn't it? You know what I mean? I'm just picturing someone who I know, I do that a lot. Obviously, I don't name, like, people and stuff, but I imagine who I know who would wear this and when they would have worn it in their lives. That fruity rose might make it a little bit younger leaning. That's kind of how it smells. 
like 21 to 35 kind of smell. Obviously I couldn't pull it off, Jesus. Last but not least, we have a perfume whose name I have hidden, a Fleur de la Lita. La Lita. Galbanum's back, woody. You know how galbanum can be quite woody? Musty, brown, brown green kind of thing going on. Lovely, to be fair. Very lovely, very complex. I've enjoyed that. I've enjoyed all of these, if you want the truth. None of them smell bad. None of them are shite at all. Um, I don't think these ones, well, three of them are made for me, you know. The, uh, the Isara is interesting and is going to go on my hand or my body, or my skin, I should say. So, we shall see, shall we? We shall see. Anyway, I've enjoyed these first impressions. Thank you very much for watching, everybody. I will see you all again soon, hopefully. Bye-bye.